Okay, as far as the improper integrals we've been considering, it's uh, it's pretty much done. I guess we do want to consider what happens if we've got a vertical asymptote, and instead of being at the beginning of an interval or the end of an interval, it's right there in the middle of the interval. Um, but but this isn't going to take a lot of time. It's if you it's um an application of a fact we stated way back in calculus one that if you've got an integral and you've got a value inside that interval you can break the integral up into two. Um, we can look at, the, I mean, if we have our function, it must be looking something like this. So we can find this area to the left of the asymptote, and we can find this area to the right of the asymptote, and we can just add those areas together. I mean, it's tedious. There is no use pretending it's not tedious because each of these integrals is an improper integral. So each of these integrals is secretly a limit, and you have to take multiple limits. But in terms of the actual definition, it's pretty straightforward. The only thing I want to stress here is we know that these integrals might exist or might not exist. For, for an integral like this, if it's going to exist, if it's going to converge, both of those integrals must converge. So I say it's kind of tedious because it's two limits, but maybe it's only one limit. If one of those integrals doesn't exist, Neither of them do, and do, I mean, if one of these integrals doesn't exist, then this integral doesn't exist. The other one doesn't matter. So like the integral from negative one to one of one divided by x dx. I mean, this, Integral, this function, I should say, has a vertical asymptote right in the middle of that interval. There is a vertical asymptote at zero. So this is an improper integral. And to try to decide whether it exists and to find its value if it does exist, we break it up into two. If both of these in if both of these integrals exist, the integral over there on the left exists. If one of these integrals fails to exist, if one of these integrals diverges, then the integral on the left diverges. Um, so I guess I, I sort of stated that as if we finished the problem, but let's take a look at one of these integrals. Let's take a look and let me get my fat pen back and let me take a look at the integral from negative one to zero 
of one divided by x. So we're looking at this part of the curve. Here's negative one, here's zero. I mean, the point of doing this, maybe I should say this explicitly, is that we know how to take um, these integrals if the vertical asymptote is at an end point. So if we have the vertical asymptote in the middle, we're breaking it apart into two integrals where now the vertical asymptotes are at the end points of the integrals. And we can use the techniques from Monday and Tuesday. So we'll take the limit as n approaches zero, the integral from negative one to n, one divided by x dx. And we, we did a really complicated or at least pretty complicated integral with partial fractions yesterday. I uh, selected an easier example this time. One over X is an integral that we should just be able to take. It's the natural logarithm. Always remember the absolute values. The natural logarithm of negative one isn't defined, but that's okay because the absolute value is turning it to positive one. And then this is like the third time this limits come up. So maybe, Maybe we just remember it by now. Um, the natural log has a vertical asymptote at zero. That thing is going to negative infinity, negative infinity minus, I mean, this is zero, but negative infinity minus any number is still negative infinity. So this integral diverges. And since this integral diverges, we are done. This integral diverges. And because that integral diverges, this integral doesn't matter whether it converges or whether it diverges. For that integral on the left to exist, both of these component integrals have to exist. The second we see that one of these doesn't exist, we're done. Problem's done. And that's, well, I was going to say that's improper integrals. That's the first of two largely unrelated topics that get covered under the umbrella term of improper integrals. Um, does anybody have any questions about this? Then the next, I mean, we're still in the same section, um, but the next topic is related to the topic we just did, only in the sense that they both involve infinity. Yeah. I mean, in the topic we just did, 
we have these vertical asymptotes and we have functions going up to infinity like that. The topic of the day and also tomorrow I expect is if we sort of flip that around. We've got infinity out there on the right and we've got a function that looks like this. And maybe this starts at one, let's say. And we want the integral from one to infinity. Of this function. So we'll define this. Um, this is really very, I guess I overstated things. I acted like this topic and the last topic were unrelated, but I mean, we've got this region. It's an infinite region. It doesn't have a right-hand bound. It just keeps going and going to the right. And we're trying to find the area of this infinite region, and maybe it's finite. Maybe this infinite region somehow has a finite area. And when I put it like that, I guess it's really quite um, quite similar to what's come before. We have this region, and it's an infinite region. It never ends. It just keeps going up and up. And we were looking at the area of that infinite region, and that area might exist or it might not exist. So in that sense, there are similarities. And um, the way we're going to define this integral is also similar. Um, we're going to define this integral as a limit. We're going to say, okay, we've got this region. It's infinite. It just keeps going further and further to the right. How could we approximate the area under this curve? Well, instead of just going, I don't know why this pen keeps changing widths on me, but we could find this area easily enough. If this is say 100, this is the, just the integral from one to 100. And we can find this area, if this is for clearly not to scale, but if this is 1000, that's just the area, the integral from one to 1000. And we can find this area, that's just, again, just a definite integral. So we can keep finding these areas, the integral from one to a hundred, from one to a thousand, from one to 10,000, from one to 100 in. And presumably if the integral from one to infinity exists, if this area is finite, then these integrals are getting closer and closer to it. Hence, the integral from A to infinity of f of x 
the acts equals the limit as capital N goes to infinity of the integral from A to N. Let me try that again so that N's actually showing up. The integral from A to N of f of x dx. So the previous material, I mean, this is a weakness of the calculus to correctivum, that a lot of stuff we do is just completely abstract, and your professor is kind of left waving his hand and promising you that these integrals show up in applied settings. Um, this inter these really do show up in applied settings. And uh, tomorrow, I'm actually going to show you how. So we'll finally get a little concrete use out of all of this. Um, today, I'm just going to do some examples. Well, I shouldn't say just, but let's see how this definition works out in practice. Of course, all of these uh, examples kind of grind to a halt if you can't find the antiderivatives. Um, let's look at the integral from zero to infinity of one divided by one plus x squared dx. And I mean, we've seen this fraction before. You Perhaps remember, it's it, the integral is going to be the arc tangent. Let's take a look at this. One divided by one plus x squared, and we're going from zero to infinity. And let me phrase this in terms of area. We are trying to find the area of this region. And this region never ends. So I mean, if we increase X, it's this. You know, that it keeps going. If we, you know, you see it in red over here. If we keep increasing X, I didn't quite mean to do that. Still sometimes struggle with this. If we increase X further, it just keeps going and going. I mean, I don't know how well you can see it. This sort of, it basically just looks like a red line at this point. It looks like a horizontal line on the graph, but the curve is still here and the area under the curve is still here. And we're trying to find this area just going out all the way to infinity. And the way we are approaching this is we're saying, okay, well, we can certainly take the area from zero to 20, let's say. That's just a definite integral. We use the fundamental theorem. And we can take the integral from zero to 100, again, just using the fundamental theorem. 
and we can take the integral from zero to one fifty. So we can find the area of this region in black. And probably let me try to make this more visible. Why does it need to be going above one or below zero? So we can find the area of this region in black. And as we increase this upper limit of integration, the region in black is creeping to the right and hopefully doing a better and better job of approximating this infinite region in red. So that's how this process works. And as I say, I mean, of course, if you, if you can't take the antiderivative and or have to use like Simpson's rule, this is going to be um, really ugly, really fast. So I selected something we can deal with. Or something we can hopefully deal with, something we've learned to deal with in any event. This integral is the arc tangent. And once again, don't know why Desmos keeps making my lines thin and hard to see. But this is the arc tangent, and we're going from zero to n. So it's the limit as n goes to infinity of the arc tangent of n minus the arc tangent of zero. And now um, we might not have any real intuition, like what the heck does the arc tangent look like? This is one of those things that you learn in like pre-calculus or trigonometry, and then you forget it because you never use it for anything. Let's remind ourselves here is the arc tangent. So the arc tangent of zero is zero. What's more interesting is the limit as n goes to infinity. And in general, these limits can be hard to find. I mean, we had Lobetau's rule. That was an entire section basically dedicated to finding limits as x goes to infinity. So. I mean, just from the graph, it sure looks as if there's a horizontal asymptote here. And as we go to infinity, I mean, you see that arc tangent is just sitting at 1.57 and not changing. So, from the graph, it sure looks like the limit as we go to infinity exists and is about 1.57. And that is, that is correct. I mean, 
And if, if you do uh, recall your trigonometry, it's specifically going to pi divided by two, about 1.57. So this limit exists. Sorry, I kind of scrunched in the bottom right corner of this whiteboard. But this limit, again, sort of depending on how well you remember your trig, you can say it's pi divided by two, you can say it's 1.57, but again, this limit does exist. And therefore, this integral exists. Even though that region is infinite, this integral is a finite number. And we use the same terminology from Monday and Tuesday. We say that the integral converges. Now, I would say it's actually, it's kind of a special thing for an integral like this to converge. I mean, I selected this, this very special function, one divided by one plus x squared. But I mean, if instead of that, I'd, oh, the integral from one to infinity of um, x plus or, yeah, x plus the sine of x dx. I mean, this integral that I, I sort of selected at random, if we take a look at it, where is the share button? New share. The integral from one to infinity of x plus the sine of x. Well, um, something sure. Oh, we're just zoomed out so far. Let me. I mean, here's this region, and it's kind of like a a mountain. And I mean, of course. I, I shouldn't say, of course. Obviously, I have a lot of experience with this material. Stuff might not always be obvious to students, but I mean, if you look at this region, it's huge, right? And the further out we go, the bigger this thing gets. I mean, if you look at this region extending infinitely far to the right, and you asked me without computing any integrals to say what I thought the area of this region was going to be, I'd say that the area of this region doesn't exist. We just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And as we go further, and further to the right, I would say that this triangle is going to infinity in terms of its area. And I mean, we're right about that. Um, and I can, you know, there's no harm in it. I can formalize this. Uh, 
um, actually, this integral is not, I mean, it's in one sense, kind of, this limit in one sense is kind of easy to take. In another sense, it's a bit awkward. Well, I, at some point, I don't, on the frame I was going from zero to infinity, apparently on the board I wrote one to infinity. Let's just go from zero to infinity. So this limit requires a bit of thought, I think. It's <laughs> sorry, sort of lost my train there. We put N in and we put zero in. And we end up with this. And I mean, one half n squared is going to infinity. The complication is that as n goes to infinity, the cosine of n is not approaching a finite number and it's not approaching infinity or negative infinity. The cosine is a wave. As n goes to infinity, it keeps bumping up and down. But, but the cosine of n, the cosine in general, is stuck between a negative one and positive one. And that n squared is going to infinity. So if you have like a billion minus one or a trillion minus one or 100 billion trillion minus one, I mean, this negative cosine, because it's just stuck between negative one and one, isn't really doing anything to the limit. This part of the limit here is going to infinity, no matter what the cosine is doing. And this limit is indeed infinity. Um, so, So this integral here <laughs> diverges. At the same time, it's not, um, I mean, I would say that this integral obviously diverged if you looked at its graph. Um, But it's not always going to be clear just looking at graphs, whether we expect an integral to converge or diverge. Like, let's look at the integral from one to infinity of one divided by x. So that's default that zoom. One to infinity. So the area of this region. Well, I happen to know, and, and I can show it on the whiteboard, this integral doesn't exist. This has an infinite area. Compare that to the integral of one divided by x raised to the power of 1.1. 1. 1. 
This integral does exist. It has a finite area. I can show that too. And I mean, if you just look at them, these regions look pretty much identical. So you can't really rely on just looking at a graph and trying to make a, make a reasoned guess about whether an improper integral exists. You really do have to go through the effort of finding the limits. Let's take a look at this integral. I've claimed that this area is infinite, that this integral doesn't exist. The integral from one to infinity, one over x dx, well, we even, it, it, it is tedious. So I don't pretend it isn't tedious, but we rarely should be notationally proper and write down that we're taking a limit and all of that. So this is the limit as n goes to infinity. The natural log is the antiderivative of one over x. Uh, let me correct that typo there. We're going from one to n. So the limit as n goes to infinity, the natural log of n minus the natural log of one. Um, I am not being sloppy, I promise. n is going to positive infinity, so n is positive, one is positive. The natural log of a positive number is just that number. So I didn't bother writing the absolute values, but, but it's okay. And then, I mean, finding limits as stuff goes to infinity, we don't really have any, any trick for it. I mean, Fopetau's rule sometimes works. You really just need to be familiar with the functions and the natural log of n grows very slowly, but it doesn't have a horizontal asymptote. It does go to infinity. Let's try to convince ourselves of that. The natural logarithm is trick C because the natural logarithm grows so slowly that if you zoom out, you might think, okay, this must be this must be approaching some kind of horizontal asymptote. But it isn't. You just have to let X get really, really big to see the natural logarithm climb up. So this is the slowest growing day-to-day -day function by a huge margin, but by letting x be astronomically huge, significantly larger than the number of atoms in the universe by now, we've gotten the natural log up to about 200. And if we just let x be bigger and bigger, this does grow up to infinity. It just uh, not quickly. 
the natural log of one is a finite number. As a matter of fact, it's zero. Um, so this limit is infinity. This diverges. Compare and contrast. The integral from one to infinity of one divided by x to the power of 1.1. 1 .1. So the limit as n grows to infinity of this. And I'm going, because I can never take these integrals in my head unless I do, I'm going to rewrite one divided by x to this power as x raised to this negative power. So the limit n goes to infinity of, let me see, we bump that power up by one and we get x to the negative 0.1. If we divide by negative 0.1, I reckon that's the same as multiplying by positive 10. From one, to n. So the limit as n goes to infinity of negative 10 times 1 divided by n to the point first power plus n times one divided by one to the point first power. And again, this is something just because it's been so long since we've seen limits, but um, n to the point one is going to infinity with n. So one divided by infinity is going to be zero. So we're going to have negative 10 times zero plus 10, one divided by one to the point one power is one. And we get a finite limit. We get 10. So this integral exists. And in fact, we know this integral exists. And in fact, we know what this integral is. It's equal to 10. And again, this is maybe six. Saying stuff is interesting doesn't actually make students think it's interesting, but I think it's interesting because again, I mean, these regions we're looking at visually, they're virtually indistinguishable. It is not at all obvious from looking at these graphs that one of these areas exists and the other doesn't, but that is the case. Okay, we're not going to finish this section today. That's fine, I never expected we would. Um, let me just real quick.
put this on the board. And I'm going to, as I say, I'm going to do this in like one minute because this case is less important than the case we just looked at. In particular, in 99 times out of 100, I'd say, where these integrals are interesting, the variable represents time. And a time variable isn't going to be negative. So asking what happens from negative infinity time to B time, well, when's that going to come up? If it does come up though, it's dealt with in exactly the, the way you might expect, instead of letting n go to positive infinity, we're letting n go to negative infinity. There's a third case, and this case warrants more than four minutes. So I'll do this Thursday, and then I'll do applications Thursday. This, I don't know if anyone's here interested in probability or statistics, but integrals like this show up in probability and statistics, where we want the area where we've got a curve that's defined on the entire real number line, maybe something that looks like that. And we want to know its area on the entire real number line. And we'll pick up with this tomorrow. Thank you for your attention and I will see you then.